Hi, my name is Adele Mansour. I'm a PhD candidate based at the University of Melbourne. I'd like to begin this talk by acknowledging the traditional owners of the unceded land I'm speaking to you from, the Wurundjeri Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation. And I would like to pay my respect to elders past, present and future. As mentioned, I'm based at the Melbourne School of Population and Global Health at the University of Melbourne, where for a few years now I've worked across projects that investigate the health impact of housing conditions. This year I commenced a PhD project that is looking at the application of citizen science to an issue that sits at the intersection of climate, housing and health. The reason I'm speaking to you today is because I was very fortunate to be the recipient of this year's Australian Citizen Science Association seed grant, which will be put towards open access publishing costs. While I unfortunately couldn't be at this year's conference in person, I wanted to spend the next little while talking to you about some of the work that I'll be doing and the invaluable contribution the Access seed grant will make to this work. Before proceeding, it's perhaps useful if I first contextualise the work that the seed grant will be supporting in the broader context of my PhD project. As the climate crisis worsens and we're seeing extreme weather events increase in severity and frequency, our housing as the first line of defence against these events and where we spend much of our time will increasingly play a critical role in protecting our health and wellbeing. Yet in Australia, as is the case across many other nations, a sizable portion of our housing stock is characterised by fairly poor conditions, leaving many people particularly exposed to the effects of environmental hazards, such as rising temperatures, heavier rainfalls and stronger winds. And we know that certain groups will be disproportionately affected by this. With the predicted severe heat this coming summer, particularly along the eastern states, it is going to be very difficult and potentially dangerous for those who can't adequately cool their homes. And so we urgently need to address this issue. And to do this, we require systemic change from the national through to the local levels. At the state and national levels, housing policies such as strengthened minimum rental standards and changes to the building code would not, not only allow us to better withstand environmental hazards and therefore protect population health and wellbeing, but contribute to mitigation given the significant contribution of housing to the climate crisis, with our housing infrastructure being a substantial contributor to carbon dioxide emissions. And so it is in this context within which my PhD project is taking place. And what I'm wanting to explore is how we can leverage citizen science to generate housing solutions that protect population health and wellbeing in the face of the climate crisis. The reason for focusing specifically on citizen science is that meaningful involvement of civil society is pivotal to responding to the climate crisis. And we see this in the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction and the Sustainable, Sustainable Development Goals. When we think about improving our housing, the people who live in them are the ultimate beneficiaries. So it's clear that they should be playing an active role. While I was exploring the direction this work should take, I was particularly influenced by Robotham and colleagues who are working to apply citizen science in the prevention space. They have written, and I'm going to paraphrase a little here, the impact and image of population health could be profoundly altered if as many people currently involved in counting birds, fish and galaxies were involved in recording details about whether they have access to healthy food, safe places to live, work and play. So it's this need for bottom-up community engaged approaches and the potential that citizen science holds that led me to focus on it as a possible addition to the suite of tools needed to create change in this space. Now to shift the focus a little to the project that the Access Seed Grant is supporting. Within my PhD project, I'm conducting an in-depth case study of an existing citizen science project in Australia that is focused on this climate, housing and health intersection. 
The project, which is called Renter Researchers, actively engages occupants of rental homes to measure the indoor temperature during summer and winter, with the aim of helping to build political support for minimum energy efficiency standards in rental properties across the country. The implementation of minimum energy efficiency standards in the rental sector would not only help to minimise the health effects associated with living, with living in housing that is either too hot or too cold, but by requiring less energy, it means that our homes would contribute to reducing pollution. Better Renting, which is a community organisation that works to advocate for stable, affordable and healthy homes, have designed and implemented this project. And it's part of a suite of activities undertaken by Better Renting to improve the conditions for renters in this country. Renter Researchers is currently about to commence its fifth iteration this summer. In addition to recording the temperature inside their homes, renters involved also take part in surveys, phone interviews and ongoing group discussions with their fellow participants. And this qualitative information really augments the temperature measurements as they help to interpret the data and derive a more complete picture of renters' situations. Also as part of their involvement in the project, citizen scientists attend webinars and are provided with media and advocacy training and opportunities to speak with journalists and write to their local politicians. So they're quite central to the advocacy component of this project. Naturally, given the focus of my PhD, I was particularly inter interested in renter researchers, especially since it's been delivered several times now and has been quite successful in garnering media attention and building community among people living in rental housing. Better Renting have kindly welcomed me to conduct an in-depth case study of the project, which has just commenced and will continue over the coming months. The aim is really to understand how the project was conceived and executed and the pathways through which citizen science projects of this nature can affect change. And from this, I'm wanting to distill key learnings that can be inform the development of successful and sustainable citizen science projects operating in this space. In addition to this, by working in partnership with Better Renting throughout the duration of the case study, I aim to generate findings that will be both useful and actionable for the organisation. In terms of data collection, I'm employing a range of methods, including reviewing key documentation, such as project plans and reports, observing staff meetings and obtaining project data, including the number and extent to which renters have been involved in the project. I'll also be conducting interviews with renters involved in the current iteration of the project and other organisations who have leveraged the findings of renter researchers for their own work and advocacy in this space. As previously mentioned, the seed grant will be put towards the cost of open access publishing of this case study. And I just wanted to take a moment to reflect on why I think this is important in the context of this work specifically. First, and I suppose most obviously, it is important that this case study is published open access so, it, so that its findings are widely accessible. It is not only crucial that the research community can access the findings, but perhaps more so that it can be accessed by audiences outside of academia, especially since this work is being carried out by a community organisation. By ensuring that the findings of this work are accessible, I hope to contribute to demonstrating the tangible contribution that citizen science can make to informing actions and decisions in this space. Second, through my research, I'm hoping to contribute to the increased uptake of citizen science in public and environmental health domains, where in comparison to other fields, it is novel and its use remains relatively low. Therefore, my intention is to not only publish this case study open access, but to do so in a public and environmental health focused journal to increase the visibility of citizen science approaches among audiences who may not be as familiar with it, and ultimately demonstrate its applicability and value across a spectrum of disciplines. Now, before I finish up, I was asked to provide some thoughts on what the Australian Citizen Science Association's strategy in terms of the seed grants should be moving forward. I do think that the seed grants are a fantastic way to not only receive financial support for professional development, publishing, or to put towards an existing project, but it is a great way to profile some of the excellent and diverse citizen science projects that are taking place across the country. 
Having said that, I think providing the seed funding opportunity to as many people as possible each year, as opposed to offering it only to one person, would be a great way to not only support more activities in this space, but to create opportunities for networking and collaboration among those awarded. Of course, this means that the amount awarded per person may be reduced, but such an approach could create other ways to promote the application of citizen science and may even help to foster interdisciplinary partnerships. Alternatively, this could be achieved by introducing former and current awardees each year so as to create an expanding cohort of program alumni. I would like to finish up by expressing my gratitude to the Australian Citizen Science Association for awarding me the seed grant and also the opportunity to present to you today. I would also like to acknowledge Sabrina Clark from Better Renting, without whom this work would not be possible, and also my supervisors, Rebecca Bentley, Catherine Bowen, and Samantha Robotham. I look forward to engaging more with the association, particularly as my PhD progresses, and learning from others who are doing some truly fantastic work in this space. Thank you.